What's up? This is DJ Mechalek from Time Machine, and this is my studio. So this is um, this is all the equipment uh, in my studio, and it's pretty much everything here is what I use to make the beats for the Tesla Time uh, album, the Time Machine, and. Um, Mostly, probably what you'll see here is, um, you know, sequencers and samplers. Um, that's kind of that's kind of what I'm all about. I haven't been able to really steer away from it. We got the ASR10, which is um, what I've been using since you know this is the first serious sampler that I ever got. Sequencer two, and this is uh, this is the MPC 2000 XL. This is actually J Sonic's MPC 2000 XL that he used to make the Nightlights beat and uh, all sorts of others, but I know Time Machine fans love it for the Nightlights beat. And this is the S950, and the S950 I used um, strictly for drums. All the drums on the album, just about, except for two tracks, um, were sampled into the S950. And everything was sequenced on the 2000XL. So I got every all the sounds and the bass lines on the ASR, and um, all the drums on the S950 and everything sequenced in here. I know it's, um, I know it's kind of complicated unnecessarily, but that's it's fun. It's fun that way. Um, and other than that, we got some preamps here. Um, you know, I go from the samplers into uh, the computer uh, Pro Tools, and um, yeah, for the most part, that's how I make the beats. And uh, when I mix everything down. I go out through the computer and through this compressor right here, which is an API 2500, and um, I like the sound of that too. I mean, I can't, I, I got to keep it somewhat analog. It's just the sound that that works for me and makes sense to me. Otherwise, it doesn't quite sound right to me. Um, and yeah, that's that's my workflow right there. My favorite song to mix on the album was The Things I Like To Do. Um, and the reason for this, among other things, is that I knew, I think we all knew it was going to be the lead single. So I knew that once I got the mix right for that, that I'd have that kind of bass line to, 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 to go off everything else with. Um, and uh, also, there's really not all that much going on um, in the beat. It is uh, very uh, much just uh, kind of break heavy and melody heavy. So we got, um, I knew that I wanted the, the break to be kind of the whole weight of, um, of the bottom end. And um, other than that, just the melody needed to shine and obviously the vocals because it's uh, both verses are story verses um, they need to be very very present and audible um, and that was really it I mean the chorus uh, the chorus has that little kind of spacey delay in it and um, it, it worked really well with with the kind of bigness of uh, making Jay and Chamel uh, really large and kind of panned on either side, kind of make it um, surrounding you almost when they talk about, you know, the 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 ooey 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 and stuff like that, which is, you know, surprisingly catchy for such a raw ass song. So, yeah, things I like to do. <laughs> That's weird to hear the bass line so loud. So I just sampled one um, bass tone and just fucked with it.
when you have a beat like this that's just so melodic, I mean, I guess it would be easy to just kind of filter the bass line and, um, and you know, make a kind of a carbon copy of the melody, but, you know, the, the kind of lower, lower octave version of it, or, um, but I, especially with something like this, if you want that kind of, you want it to skip along, you want it to have some bounce, you kind of need to play it. So, yeah, I mean, I don't even remember doing that, but, um, that must have been my thought process, like it needs to kind of bounce and skip along, so, I didn't want it to be like a melodic bass line at the same time because then you know then it just it's just flowing the whole time instead of like skipping along or bouncing along on top of the drums Did you notice when it comes in, um, and it kind of, it lowers the whole beat when the, when the boom comes in, when the 808 comes in, next time you listen, peep, the, peep, peep when the 808 comes in and everything kind of drops, except for your vocals, the vocals don't drop. You do what's good for you, but I am not impressed, cause I am having fun, and you are having less, I'm making rash decisions, throwing caution to the wind, I'm drinking lots of liquor like I have a slight allergy to mold, of course, which isn't good for a record digger. Um, so I keep I keep a lot of the records that I'm messing with um, for beats and whatnot um, in, in here. Uh, but like this this top joint, this is all drums here. I wish this whole thing was drums, though. That would be tight. <laughs> um, you know, this is stuff that I'm kind of thinking of working with or working with currently. Um, This is a bunch of beats still on that floppy disk life. Um, one of my zip drives went out. Honestly, for me, for some reason, floppies are way more reliable. So, endorsed by me. Um, yeah, got some cassettes. That's it. A lot of beats here. That's the other thing. Every time, every time I make a beat, I start from scratch, so I don't reuse drums. So every single, every single uh, beat that's in here, um, really, that I've ever made, unless I'm scratching uh, or scrapping a, a beat, all from just complete zero. I don't reuse anything, so um, for better or for worse, I think that's why. I, it's more difficult to get a consistent sound, but it's more rewarding when you do because you're literally starting from zero um, and trying to achieve something that is still your sound. So. My process for mixing the test of time was freaking long. It took forever because it's not something that, it's not like scratching or making beats. It's not something that I have the utmost confidence in. So I would do a mix um, and try to find, try to find the kind of, the happy place between the lyrics being in your face, the vocals being in your face and being clear, the drums being in your face, and the melody being present, um, and also everything kind of hitting the way it should for, uh, for the way that the, the, the drums were structured and stuff like that. And, you know, that's not, to me, that's not easy. I'm sure there are some people it's easy for, but for me, it's not easy, um, still not easy. So, you know, I did man, I mean, you could ask Jane Jamel, I probably did 
and I did a bunch they never heard. I probably did like 15 mixes of each song that I actually listened to, not even that I scrapped, you know, right away, just because it's not, I know there's people for as long as I've been DJing or, you know, longer, there's been people that have been mixing records. Um, and, uh, you know, that's, that's a craft. And I was never, I was never satisfied with, with what I was getting until towards the very end. Um, it's, I started to kind of get into the zone of, okay, I figured out how to make things sound consistent with each other and also sound the way I thought it should sound at the start and, um, the way I want it to sound now. And, um, you know, after that was, was, was kind of interweaving everything together and, you know, putting the entire album together, which is something that we kind of never addressed as Time Machine. We always were like, track one, we'll put the song, we'll fade it out. Track two, put the song, fade it out. This one, we, I, we all wanted to um, make it something much grander and much uh, bigger so that it's kind of, you know, a big, it's a long journey kind of from the start to the end and everything makes sense, um, including the transitions. Um, and the transitions being uh, kind of, a, I guess, a little bit of a track on their own. The toughest song to mix on the test of time was definitely Just Kids. It was actually uh, giving me problems all the way through to the mastering process. Um, I had to actually make another mix of it <laughs> at the very end um, because it was kind of causing that much trouble. Um, it was just one of those songs that has so much going on um, that I wasn't even really thinking about when I was making it. Um, I was just kept adding and adding and adding. And um, I think also it's probably the most different sounding track on the whole album um and you know that probably that probably lended to the difficulty of it um so um with this track there's i got three snares a clap i got a you know snare reverb i got a hi hats a hat loop you know uh we got the vocals we got uh, i got some synths going on i got the bass line i got 808, I have the high kick, and you know, the thing is, with this beat, everything kind of needs to be in your face. The kicks need to be in your face. The snare was the major part of it to me, and need to be kind of smacking you, you know, right in the head. Um, and to make all that coexist, I was having a difficult time with it. Um, and you know, of course, you know, Jay and Chamel, their lyrics are incredible too. So they need to be just as upfront. Um, and I just, I was having a real tough time with it, but we eventually figured out um, how to get that balance. Or I, I figured it out. sampling means to me is pretty much everything I liked when I grew up was sample based. So that was, of course, I was going to get into it. Um, and, you know, sampling is tricky. There's people now that are so anti-sampling. There's people that are still, if you don't sample, you're doing it wrong. Uh, if you loop, you're doing it wrong. If you don't loop, you're doing it wrong. And it's really it's so wide open now you can do so much with sampling um turn it into something completely different or keep it very close to what it originally was um with time machine um everything is very very melodic and 
you know, Time Machine fans know that um, Jay and Chamel, they really, they really shine over some melodic, like, breakbeat-ish, um, you know, kind of really loop-centric instrumentals. And so that's what I kind of went back to uh, while making the beats for um, the test of time. I basically played these guys some records, what sounds good, what doesn't, and um, then I tried to figure out how I could make it sound like me, you know, put my touch on it, you know, my drums and, and uh, my kind of sprinkles and bass lines and sequencing and, you know, um, just everything that, everything that transforms it into a song. Um, and, uh, you know, at, at the time that I started making the test of time, I wasn't doing really any looping. I was just kind of doing a lot of pitching and chopping and, um, you know, getting real experimental with it. But I knew, I knew for this to work, it, it wasn't going to be that way. So, um, you know, I guess, you know, Time Machine fans get excited because, you know, I kind of took it back to the approach of, of Slow Your Roll. distinguishes me from other producers is um, I think the sample choice mostly I want to start there because if I start with something that sounds like someone else would choose it then you're kind of dead in the water already um, I like to when I hear something if it sounds a little quirky or a little off kilter it kind of hits something in my brain and I think well this sounds like something I could make my own so, you know, I think anybody that samples and, and uses loops knows that you're kind of, you're kind of handcuffed from the beginning because, um, you're working with a pre-established melody. And so that's one of the things I try to do is to, to build something off of this little snippet and make it into something much greater that kind of has peaks and valleys and travels and doesn't just stay the course because honestly that shit's boring if it's just a loop um to me you know it, it it's it's great if someone just blacks out on a loop sometimes but again with time machine it's got to be it's got to be more than that it's got to be a little bit of a journey i mean there's always a topic to the song so it's only right that um the the storytelling or the narrative is over something that has some um, evolution to it. So I think, you know, I know of course there's other people that do that, but I, I, I like to think that if you hear a, a time machine beat and then you hear something else I've done, it's like, yeah, that, that kind of sounds like Mech did it, or I could tell that's, that's a Mecha like beat. I see a horse of a different color through this kaleidoscope Running down the track to get the glory Hopping out of the um, bath because it's boring And headed outside to, where it's pouring uh, the stories kind of go upcoming sampling artist uh, I'm, you know, I'm by no means an expert at all I've been around some major, major people uh, That are <laughs> way more serious uh, Way more serious and way more heavyweight than me But, uh I think the, the main thing, I know this is going to sound contradictory, but um, the main thing I would say is like all this, all of this or whatever, I mean it took me forever to get, um, but you don't need it. I mean I made, um, you, you know, I made how many albums, like 
four, five, six albums with just my ASR-10. I didn't even have a computer at the time. Um, you know, you have a laptop, that's all you have, you can make it happen. And, you know, you have a MPC and that's all you have. You know, that's really all you need. You just, like, figure out how to, how to make things do what you want them to do. And you really don't need anything else. So, you know, nothing I say is gonna <laughs> is gonna uh, is gonna break the earth. But like, I wish someone had told me that when I was younger, because I always had this kind of gear lust. But it's it's ridiculous. You don't need any of it. You know, you just need one thing that you can make do what you want to do. Once again, DJ Mechalek, thank you for coming hanging with me in my studio, um, be it bedroom as it is, and definitely keep a look out for that new time machine album. Okay, it might be better if I settled at the table, put my chair on my prairie or my Anna Green Gables. Unstable was the formula, counselor couldn't fix like the wind 50 and rattly called like fuck it if it flips. She said you like my earrings, more concerned about her hips. He said you'll meet my girl, I said if only I could hit. Somebody watching me connected think that I'm well. All right, all right, all right, we got it. Here we go. Party trainers shitting on y'all after dinner. To be honest, on stage I didn't know it's here. You put somebody through her, but not trying to change the story. I would use a credit. Oh man. <laughs> Is that your patron saint, Butters? Oh, Butters. Does he does he make sure everything comes out the final approval? Yeah, um, he pretty much oversees everything, and if anybody steps to me, he turns into Professor Chaos. As you see here, but um, you know, South Park makes me laugh. So anytime, anytime I get into you know or out of a groove, I just look at this dude's face and uh, you know, make him smile or whatever. Or this guy. And he goes in the dark. So. Yo, so. Alright. Pushing up and pulling strings, making something out of nothing is a famous family trade. Father's hat in Manhattan ever since we're getting paid. Took a flying carpet journey to the fountain of you.